Good afternoon, Facebook. This is attorney Salvador J. Lopez. This is attorney advertising material. We're here today to talk about Cook County property tax bill, uh, specifically the most recent tax bill that just uh, was released a couple weeks ago and was mailed out earlier this week. Um, it was actually mailed out at the same time that it was mailed out last year, right around the 4th of July which, I mean, call me a conspiracy theorist if you'd like, but I think it's being sent around the 4th of July at a time that people are taking time off of work, um, going to family barbecues, going to uh, 4th of July parties, uh, specifically as a little bit of a distraction because as we all know, the property tax bills are increasing and in certain circumstances increasing substantially, um, which hits us hard. So a little bit of distraction, uh, is the county, is that what the county is going for? We're not really sure. But anyway, um, the idea today is I wanted to talk a little bit about the tax bill, how property taxes are calculated, and what you can do. Uh, first thing we'll take a look at is the property tax bill itself. Um, it, I've obviously, I'm using a sample here of a real tax bill, so I've redacted or blocked out the identifying markers to, to protect privacy. Um, this, the center of the page, a majority of it is explained to where your tax dollars are actually going. And as a, a citizen of the state of Illinois and a citizen of, the, of Cook County in Chicago or whatever municipality you live in in Cook County, you should be looking at this. You should be asking questions about where your money is going. Um, the bottom of the tax bill over here on the left is the tax calculator. We'll zoom in a little bit on that. That is what tells you how property taxes, how your specific property taxes are actually calculated. So if we look first thing here at the uh, assessed value, um, the assessed value is, excuse me, the, what the county considers to be property value, what they'll list here. Now, you'll notice that it says 2017 property value. You're asking yourself, well, we're in 2018. Why are they using 2017's assess or market value? And the reason is that the county always, and in the state of Illinois actually, all counties, tax bills are paid a year behind. If you're interested in knowing a little bit more about the history, it was during the Great Depression at some point that the state said they were going to give people a break on property taxes. And in the following year, they said, no, never mind, we're not going to do that. We're actually just going to charge you last year's bill this year, and we'll charge you this year's bill last year. Um, a lot more history to that, but besides the point, the way that it works is the taxes that you're paying are actually the previous year's bill. And in that previous year, when people say they're appealing their taxes, that's what they're actually doing. They're fighting about the value that the county is assigning to their property. Uh, one of the things that I want to point out here, um, the county's market value, what they consider to be the value of your property, has nothing to do with real life, uh, what your property is actually worth. Sometimes the county will be way lower than what your property is actually worth. And sometimes the county will be way higher than your property's actually worth. Sometimes they'll be close to it, but uh, that's not always the case. And I have had people who uh, worry that in appealing their property taxes that they're actually reducing the value of the property. I, I'm here, I, I will tell you here today that that is not at all the case. You can appeal your taxes. The county can say that your property is worth $10,000, but if you have a real estate agent who's telling you that it's actually worth $100,000, then it's probably worth $100,000. Tax, for taxing purposes, market value is completely different than real life. So do not worry about what the county is valuing your property at. Um, at the same time, if you think your property is worth 100,000 and you see your tax bill that the county is saying it's worth 300,000, you can list it for sale at 300,000, but I can almost guarantee you that um, if the house is in your area selling for 100,000, then no one's going to pay you 300,000, the county included. But that's a great example to point out that you should probably appeal your taxes because if the county is assessing you $300,000 and your house is only worth 100,000, they're charging you three times as much as it should be. So anyway, moving right along, if we look here, the uh, property value for 2017, which is the tax bill that we're actually paying right now, um, is 137A10 in this case. And the assessed value or the assessment is if you have residential property, the assessment is always at 10% in Cook County. So what that means is that they just take 10% of whatever they consider to be your market value. And in this case, 10% of $137,810 would be 13,781. They then multiply that times the state equalizer. 
it's a number that the, the state figures out to um, uh, multiply all property assessed values across the state by that number to kind of balance the numbers out to get the assessments to where they need to be for the property taxes. And then finally, that gives you the equalized assessed value, the basis for the uh, tax, um, your tax bill. And then they just take your tax rate. And in Chicago, the tax rate is floating around 7%. Last year, we were at about 7.1. The year before that, we were about 6.9. Now we're at 7.291, basically 7.3%. So 40,829 times a tax rate of 7.291% means that this person's property tax bill um, is $2,976.84 for the year, right? Then we take that amount um, we remove the homeowner's exemption. Um, then here we deduct the first installment, which just means the tax bill that was paid in March, meaning that this current tax bill is one thousand four thirteen thirty four. But let's let's forget about that for a second. Let's just go with the amount to two thousand nine hundred seventy six. So, the when someone says I want to appeal my property taxes, they always say, um, you know, my tax bill came too high. I want to appeal it. The problem there is that it's usually too late to appeal that tax bill because as we said, it was a property tax bill for 2017. Um, right now in 2018, we're appealing property taxes for tax year 2018, which are gonna be paid in 2019, next year. There's two tax bills per year. One that comes out in February, March, and one that comes out in July, August, September, during that time frame. Right? The one that came out this year in 2018, in February, was actually for the first half of 2017. The one that just came out right now was for the second half of 2017 and 2018's taxes are going to be paid next year. Now, to make things a little bit more complicated, the first tax bill, the one that comes out in February and March in Cook County is always 55% of last year's bill. So for those of you at home that wanna figure out what your tax bill is going to be next February and March, it's simple. You take this amount, the total tax bill per year, 2000 976.84 or whatever it is on your tax bill, you take 55% of that and that's going to be your tax bill next year. Now, the, the reason that they do that is because property tax appeals or appeals evaluation, which we'll talk about here in a second, are always, um, it's a long process. It starts with January and it floats all the way through into the beginning of the following year. So those assessments, those values that the county is placing on it don't actually become final until much later in the process. So to give you an example, the uh, values this year for the taxes that will be paid next year for property taxes in 2017 actually became final April 1st of 2018. Um, so the first tax bill came out before those property values were finalized. And then we need a couple months for the state to determine equalized assessed value and the local tax rates to be developed. So for that reason, um, the first tax bill is always gonna be 55% because Cook County is actually telling you, hey, we can't wait until the second tax bill or the property values are finalized. We're just gonna charge you 55% of the previous year's bill. Okay, so moving right along. When you say you wanna appeal your taxes, you're not appealing the amount of your taxes. You're actually appealing at the very first step. You're appealing whatever property value the county assigns to your property. Remember, that has nothing to do with real life. It's just a value that the county's assigning to your property. Uh, the best way to explain it is based on other houses in your area that are similar to yours, means same style, uh, close to the same square footage, close to the same age, you know, whether there's a garage or not. Um, those types of things are taken into consideration when determining your type of house. So the idea behind the property taxation system at Cook County is to make it a fair and just, a fair and equitable tax system so that if you have a similar house in the same area um, that uh, an, uh, same area of one of your neighbors obviously um, and you're paying twice as much that's not fair and equitable that's not reasonable um, the uh, so you'd want to appeal and say hey you sh I should be paying as much as them um, and the reason you want to do that is because eventually they're you're going to drag them up right by not appealing your property tax bill is three times as much the county eventually is going to go to your neighbor and say, hey, we're charging them three times as much, so we want to make things fair and equitable. They're not going to say we're going to reduce theirs. They're going to say we're increase yours. So that's why it's always important to appeal your property tax bill and to also make sure that all of your neighbors appeal their, your property, their property tax bills, especially those that have the same um, types of houses in your area. So moving along, um, the property tax bills are determined by township, right? Uh, now. 
what the heck is a township? Most people say, I've never heard of a township. Some people have in the more active townships and maybe the more rural areas of the county. Um, most people in Chicago that I talk to have no idea what their township is. So if you look on your tax bill here in the top right corner almost, it'll tell you the township, West Chicago Township. About eight, eight townships in the city of Chicago um, and your property taxes are determined by your township. Um, and All right. So uh, we will be taking questions along the way. Um, so if you have uh, questions, uh, feel free to submit them in the comment sections. I think that's how it works on Facebook Live. I've never done Facebook Live. So um, for those of you that have questions, you feel free to, to, to ask questions by whatever method Facebook Live allows you to, and we'll try to address them. Uh, it's just been pointed out to me that uh, when I've been showing the tax bill, it's been showing inverted, so I apologize for that. But you kind of get the gist of, of where to look on your uh, property tax bill for the information that you need. Instead of showing it to you, I'll just give you a description of where it's found in the tax bill. So getting back to townships. Uh, there's various townships in Chicago, there's uh, West, there's Lake, um, there's Hyde Park, um, there's um, Rogers Park. So figure out where your tax, and it, it may not be people say, well, I'm in, um, I'm, I'm in the loop. Well, the loop is not a township, right? I mean, you may be West, for example, if you're in the, in the West Loop. Um, some townships do coincide, for example, there's Jefferson Township, and obviously people who live in Jefferson Park are, are in Jefferson Township, but that includes other areas too that people that may not think that they live in Jefferson Park. So figure out where your township is because that's gonna be important with regards to, to appeal deadlines and how that works, which we'll talk about again here in a second. So when you appeal your tax bill, you're actually fighting the value that the county is assigning to your house, right? And the more important thing to remember is once your tax bill comes out, it's usually too late. That value has already been set in stone. Um, and if you appeal now, you're actually appealing next year's property tax bill because you're fighting about the value for this year. Another thing to point out is that Cook County only reassesses property values every three years, right? Um, what that means is the last time that the city of Chicago, for example, um, West Township, we'll take that as an example, the last time that there was a reassessment was three years ago in um, 2015. So the property value assessments where Cook County came out and assigned new property values, new market values, again, their market value, not real life market value, to properties was in 2015, but that was for property taxes that were paid in 2016, right? So since the last time they did reassessments was 2015, the next time they're gonna be doing reassessments is this year in 2018, right? But not for property taxes that are paying paid this year, for property taxes that are gonna be paid next year in 2019. So since the city of Chicago was reassessed completely in 2015, and they're gonna be reassessed again this year in 2018, this is one of the most important years, in my, in my opinion, historically, one of the most important years to appeal your property taxes. And here's why, right? The county does use recent property sales. Um, they started doing that a lot more than they were doing uh, 10, 15 years ago. So if we think about where our real estate market was in 2015 to where it is today in 2018, um, that's kind of scary because the real estate market is drastically improved. Uh, houses that were selling for, I had a client yesterday um, who was telling me that they, they bought their house uh, about four or five years ago and they paid about $100,000 for the house. And now that they notice that all of their neighbors that are selling, they're selling for about 180, right? That's a significant increase in, in property values in a three year period. So Cook County is going to want to catch up. They're going to say, you, your house was valued at 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 in 2015. Now they're going to say, well, your neighbors are selling for 350, 375, 400, 450. We're, we want to catch you up to that. And that's really dangerous because some areas have improved much faster than others. Um, I've seen areas where property values have almost doubled in the past three years. And what that means is that Cook County will reassess you a double the amount. If they wanna, if you were at $100,000 last year and they're gonna reassess you $200,000 this year, that means that your property tax bill will double. It's just basic math. So 2018, this year, is one of the most important years to appeal your property tax bill for that reason. Excuse me, I, I wanna use the proper terminology. One of the most important years to appeal 
your assessed value or your market value that the county is assigning. I don't want to say appeal your tax bill because that is a little bit misleading that people think that they can appeal the amount of taxes that they're, they're actually paying. So 2018 is one of the most important years that you can appeal the value um, that, the, that Cook County is assigning to your house because the real estate market has increased substantially. Right? And at the same time, we want to take into consideration that the city of Chicago and most of the municipalities in Cook County are increasing your tax rates. Right? So not only is it about the assessed value or the market value that Cook County is assigning to your property, but it's, we know that the city of Chicago, um, uh, Calumet City, Oak Park, all these other municipalities are saying, well, we need more money. So we're also going to increase your tax rate too. So it's at the beginning, you have the market value that the county is assigning. Then if we remember the formula, you have that. And then we take 10% of that. So if you're 100,000, 10% of that is 10,000. And then we multiply it times uh, equal, um, state equalizer with this year is 2.9627. So if you multiply 10,000 times 2.9627, that gives you your equalized assessed value. And then you take your local, local tax rate. So if you were at 10,000 this year and the 7% tax rate, we know that your tax bill will be about 2,900. Now, let's say that we take your tax bill, um, your the Cook County comes out and says, well, your house is actually worth 200,000 now. Next year, it's gonna be 10% of that is 20,000. And the equalized assessed value does change from year to year, but it changes very little. As an example, last year it was 2.8032, 2.8032, and this year it's 2.9627. So it changes, but it usually changes the wrong way in that it increases. Um, so if we take that um, 20,000, do it times the equalized assessed value, at that point, let's say that we're 2.99, um, and then we take at this point, the city of Chicago is at 7.1. Let's say at that point we're at 7.3. Now you've been hit hard twice, right? You were hit at the front end where Cook County is saying that your property is now worth twice as much as it was this year. Um, and the city of Chicago is also saying, hey, we need a little bit more. Or your local municipality is saying, hey, we need a little bit more. And that, that, can be, um, that can hit quite hard. And the other scary part is, if you remember earlier, I said that your first tax bill is going to be 55% of this year's bill, right? So if this year's bill was roughly $3,000, Next year, your tax bill is going to be 55% of that, right? 1,600, 1,700, whatever the math is, right? And then the second tax bill is where the county reconciles. That means that's where they catch up. So if you pay $1,700 of your, uh, in your property taxes in March and your tax bill was actually $6,000 for the year, that means that your second half tax bill will make up that difference. That will be a $4,300 tax bill. That is not a mistake, uh, that is not a joke, um, that is not a clerical error, and that is what will happen. And that's actually what happened. What is happening to a lot of our clients right now in areas that were reassessed last year. A lot of um, uh, the west and southwest suburbs and those townships were reassessed last year, like Summit, um, Berwyn, Cicero, all those areas were reassessed last year. So the March tax bill was still normal, but the tax bill that just hit our, you know, we've been getting all kinds of calls saying this, it's gotta be some kind of mistake. My tax bill is crazy. It's three times as much as it should have been. Um, I've yet to find uh, one situation where it was a mistake. It's just that the properties were reassessed at a much higher amount that the, um, the, the county was reconciling and catching up. So in those circumstances, I tell those people it was not a mistake. Um, you should appeal, but keep in mind that by appealing, you're appealing next year's bill. Chances are you're probably going to be stuck with that bill for this year. The problem there is that most people pay their property tax bills through their mortgage, right, through escrow. And the way escrow is determined is that the county, excuse me, your, your lender, your servicer, the bank that collects your mortgage payments, um, takes whatever that they believe the tax bill will be, which usually they use the previous year's bill, and they divide by 12, and usually they keep a cushion of about three to seven months worth, depending on the time of the year that you start the escrow, as a cushion in case your property tax bill goes up. Now, if they're only keeping three to seven months worth, but your property tax bill actually triples or doubles, that's probably not going to be enough. So your lender is going to send you a letter in the next 60 days, usually saying, hey, um, John Doe, your property tax bill was a lot higher than we expected. Um, there is now an escrow shortage, which means that we no longer have a cushion and we're actually into the negative, meaning you owe us money on that. So your payment before was uh, $1,800 with principal interest taxes and insurance. Now we're going to increase your payment by $200 extra to make up the escrow shortage. 
plus an extra two to three hundred dollars to have enough of a cushion next year over the next 12 months. That means that a person's mortgage payment just went from eighteen hundred dollars a month to twenty two, twenty three, twenty four hundred dollars a month for the next 12 months. Now the servicer or your bank will always give you the option of saying, or you can just pay us the difference. We'll take a payment of $4,000 right now and we'll only increase your payment to $2,000. Like, well, who has that, right? Um, the rainy day fund savings are gonna be complete, completely eaten up by a tax bill. Um, and in the time you're appealing, you're, keep in mind that you're not appealing until, you're appealing now the, the market value, which won't be applied until next year's tax bill. Um, that means that uh, you're gonna be stuck with that higher mortgage payment for, for 12 months. So uh, particularly if you are in the city of Chicago, you should be appealing your property tax bill this year. Uh, give me one second here. So we have a question. Um, I won't use last names, but we have a question from someone named Juan. Uh, can you contest the assessed value? Um, yes, you can. That's absolutely, that's what you do when you appeal. Your, when people say they appeal their property taxes, what they're actually talking about is appealing, not the assessed value, but the market value. Because remember, the assessed value is always 10% of the market value that the county assigns to your property. And I'll point out again, that the county's market value has nothing to do with real life market value two separate things, you will not be hurting your property's real life value by appealing with the county. So separate those completely. When you appeal your property taxes, if the county says your house is worth $150,000, um, and you know for a fact that it's not worth that or that you know houses in your are selling for 120, that's the strongest evidence to say, hey, no, um, I want you to value my property at $120,000, not $150,000. So that decreases your assessed value from 15,000, 10% of 150,000, to 12,000, which is 10% of 120,000. And I'll point out one more important thing. Real life market value um, is not the end all be all when it comes to property taxes and calculating your property tax bill. If, let's say that your house is worth $300,000 and the county has you assessed at $300,000. Remember, the basis of property taxes is that it must be fair and just, fair and equitable. You must be treated equal with uh, other people in your county, in your area, in your township, in your neighborhood. So if three of the other houses on your block that are similar to yours are only assessed at 220 and you're assessed at $300,000, your argument there is to tell the county, it doesn't matter that my market value is actually 300,000, that you have an appraisal or that I have an appraisal saying it's worth 300,000. To make the taxation system fair, you have to treat me like my neighbors, so you need to assess me at 220. That is also a winning argument. I will tell you that the county takes whatever argument works better for them. If they think market value is higher, they're gonna say that they need to use market value. If they're gonna say, well, market value doesn't count here because all your neighbors are paying higher, they're gonna use that argument. You should be doing the same thing. You should be telling the county, no, 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 no. Market value should control here. I don't care that um, my neighbors are paying higher. My house is worth less. Or alternatively, you should tell the county, well, I don't care um, what my neighbors are paying, my market value is what should control, or uh, my market value should not control, I should be paying what my neighbors are paying. Both of those are winning arguments. Um, it does take a little bit of, of elbow grease, a little bit of work effort to find out that information, but it's not impossible, especially with today's modern age and technology, um, when everything is available basically at your fingertips, and we'll get to that here in one second. So what have we learned today? Appealing your property taxes actually means that you're appealing the market value that the county assigns to your property first. Second, market value that the county assigns to the property has nothing to do with real life market value, right? Um, feel free to fight and you should fight the county as much as possible to reduce the market value of your property. Uh, third, the county, the city of Chicago will become, the entire city of Chicago, all the townships, all eight townships in the city of Chicago will be completely reassessed in 2018, this year for property taxes that are being paid in 2019. Next, property values are have increased significantly and the county is using that as their main argument for why property tax should be raised on your property because of increased market values. So this is the most important year to appeal your, uh, to fight the county and appeal your taxes, meaning that you're going to appeal the market value that the county places on your property. Um, so now, with that being said, and again, folks, feel free to ask questions, whatever you may have, um, drop them in the comment section or by whatever method, Facebook Live. I'm not super techie, so I'm not really sure how you can ask questions on Facebook Live, but go ahead and ask them and, and I will try to uh, address them. So now, uh, the whole point of this is, I always tell people, knowledge is power. 
the more that you know, the more that you can defend yourself and the more that you can argue for yourself and for your rights. So with today's day and age, with the internet at our fingertips, um, we have really no excuse to not be appealing our property taxes and finding the county on uh, what we're paying. So the first website that we should always start at is the Cook County Assessor's website, and this is what it looks like. I apologize if it's inverted. I'm not really sure how to deal with that on Facebook Live, but this is just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, here in the bottom, on the bottom left, you'll see where it says know your PIN. If you do know your PIN, and that's usually the easiest way, you just click on that. If you don't know your PIN, you uh, click here and it says don't know your PIN and it allows you to put in your address. I will tell you, try and get your PIN because the assessor's website works very poorly when you put it in your address. If you don't put it in exactly how they want you to put it in, it will tell you that it can't be found. Um, and obviously your house exists, so you know that um, can be, it, it, it should be found. But always try and find your PIN uh, because that's the easiest way. So we'll go ahead and click on know your PIN. And we're going to use, you click up here in this section up here where it says uh, search 14 digit pin and you're gonna type in your pin, right? Um, your, your pin is uh, a 14 digit pin and if you're in a house, your last four digits usually end with 0000. If you're in a townhome or a condo, you're actually, your last four will actually have the number, um, a specific number like 1015 or, or something like that identifying your specific unit because the, the pin identifies by the lot. So um, we're going to use a, a sample of uh, a, a, someone here in the city of Chicago property. We're gonna use Mayor Rahm Emanuel's house. Um, full disclosure, it is public information. I'm not disclosing his address. Anybody can type into Google what is um, Mayor Rahm Emanuel's address and his address will pop up. Um, and just give me a second here, we have a question. So I have um, a question from someone who didn't identify themselves. As you mentioned uh, that this year Chicago owners can contest. Can you please elaborate some more? Is that option every two to, two, two to three years? That's actually a very good question. Okay? Um, although the county reassesses your property taxes every three years, you have the right to appeal every year, right? Uh, the county does not have the resources, um, which I, I know in some other areas of the country they actually do do it every year, but that's neither here nor there. So although the county only comes back to reassess your property every three years, you have the option to appeal your property taxes every year, to appeal the market value that the county is assigning to your house every year. So if you were one of those folks who was hit really hard this, with this current tax bill because of the reassessment that was done last year, Berwyn, Cicero, Summit, um, any of those uh, western areas, western suburbs, southwestern suburbs, um, you, you can still appeal. You would be appealing now because you're in the first year of a higher tax bill, right? So if you appeal now and you win, which in most circumstances I say that people have a decent shot of winning because the county tends to overreach, um, then your next, next year's tax bill will level out. It will come back to where it should have been to begin with and you will only be hit hard once. Um, if you appeal, the benefit of appealing this year when a reassessment is happening is that you're going to be receiving the benefit for three full years, right? If you appeal this year and you manage to knock off a good chunk of your, uh, the market value of the county is, uh, is um, applying to your house, let's say that, that translates to $1,000, and then you do nothing for the next three years, you're okay because you're, you know that you're going to have that same assessed value over the next three years and you're gonna have that same predictable tax bill over the next three years. If you were in the situation last year where you were hit hard like Berwyn, um, Summit, any of those areas, then if you appeal this year, you know that that savings is gonna be good for two years. Um, if you haven't been reassessed and you're actually gonna be reassessed next year in 2019 uh, for 2020's taxes, um, then you'll have the benefit for one year. So to answer your question, you can appeal every year, um, but the county only comes to reassess every three years. And that's the most important you because you want to um, make sure that you're kind of throttling back the county a little bit in whatever amount they're looking to increase. Now, I will be fair to the county. There are some circumstances where they reduce in reassessments. They say, well, your, your house is gonna be worth less, so we're gonna knock you down whatever, 10%, they do make an effort. But even in those circumstances, I found that uh, when we file appeals, if the county's looking to reduce you, we can still get an even further reduction because if they're reducing you, that means that there's some strong evidence out there that you should be paying a lower tax bill. And if you really come in and fight for it, that you can reduce it even further. 
So uh, moving along, and based on this question, it's a perfect time to move along. As I was saying, um, we're gonna use uh, Ron, Mayor Ron Manuel's house as an example. I'm not disclosing any secret information. Um, this is available on the internet. If you Google his name and ask for an address, it will come up. So we're gonna go ahead and type in the PIN directly. And then after you type in the pin, this box down here is the CAPTCHA, which just basically wants to make sure that you're not a robot, you're not a machine who's doing these in mass. It asks you to type it in. I will tell you, I'm not sure, there's some, some kind of bug on the website where it doesn't always work. It'll say incorrect guess. If that happens, just refresh the web page, put the pin in again, and put in the new CAPTCHA, and, and then the second time it'll usually work. So we're gonna go ahead and type in the CAPTCHA. And we'll click search. All right, so we'll start here at the top. You see there's appeals, exemptions, forms, search, about, resources, outreach. So those uh, tabs are, are really important. Uh, um, these right here are the ones that apply to your specific property, which is property data, exemption history, appeal history, and certificate of error. The page that you actually land on is the property data. Um, here it says I need a tax bill. Um, you can usually, you all usually already have a tax bill. You can go to the treasurer's website, which we'll visit here in a second as well. But um, you can kind of bypass that. And if you scroll down, they'll have a picture of your actual property. Again, I apologize if this is inverted. I'm not really quite sure how to fix that on Facebook Live. But this will at least give you an idea of kind of where we're working here. Up here at the top, you have the PIN, property location, which is the address, city, and here, township. Right? It actually, if you don't have your tax bill on you, you have to search for it, and you go to the assessor's website, one of the things that'll give you in property data is your township. So uh, the mayor's house is located in Lakeview Township. Um, it'll give you the square footage, neighborhood, uh, and the tax code. And then we drop down here to where it says assess valuation. Uh, and if those of you at home who are following along, maybe are in your laptops looking at this, um, it'll give you the last year's, which is 2017, which remember, that's 2017 for a tax bill that we're paying right now in 2018. And then it'll give you 2018, and it says first pass. That means that that's the first time that the assessors come around and assign to a value. They'll do a second pass and then they'll finalize, um, and then it'll, it'll go to the Board of Review for certification, which means approval. So if you actually appeal, this is the number that's in question, right? But let's take a look at 2017 first. So dropping down here to the property characteristics, uh, it's a two-story uh, uh, single-family home, zero apartments because we know it's a single-family home. But here, estimated market value in 2017 and estimated market value in 2018. Now, I have no idea what the mayor's house is actually worth, um, it, but it doesn't matter because these market values are not real-life market values. They're the assessor's market values. So it may be based on recent sales of properties in this area that have gone for that amount, or um, it, it may be based on um, a, an appraisal of this house, um, or it just may be based on what other um, houses are being assessed at in that area for market values. But if we take 2017 market value, 1,145,680, right? So you say 1,145,680, 10% of that, because remember, assessed value is 10% of market value is 114,568, right? So that was for 2017. So we know that if we run a calculation, if you want to figure out the mail tax bill, which is public information anyway, you take that um, 114,568, you multiply it by 2.9627, which is the state equalizer, and then you multiply it times the local tax rate, which is about 7.2%, um, and that'll give you um, the, the tax bill. From that, you also deduct homeowner's exemption, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about at the end, just to give kind of an explanation of how that, that's calculated. But you take the tax bill, you deduct the exemptions, and that's your tax bill per year. And you would uh, reduce whatever the mayor paid in his first tax bill in March, right? Let's say that the tax bill is, I don't know, $20,000, and he paid um, 10,000 or 11,000 in March, then his tax bill right now will be $9,000. But here's the important part. We're going on to 2018. And remember, all houses, all properties in Chicago are being reassessed this year, which means that the county is coming around and assigning a new value to your house um, based on uh, whatever evidence they, they choose to use, whether that's uh, recent sales, uh, others in your property, or if your property was recently refinanced or uh, purchased, 
um, they're going to use that information. Um, and they, since your mortgage is typically recorded with the kind of recorder of deeds, they can most of the time get a value of what you paid for. It's not very secret. So if we take the first pass, right, for 2018, $1,551,090. So if we remember last year was $1,145,000, and this year it's $1,551,090, um, which is a pretty substantial increase. But remember, it's not from one year to the next. It's not how much did it increase from 2017 to 2018. It's how much did it increase from 2015 to 2018, because we know that the last time that the county came around and did this was in 2015. Three years ago so when the county says that the um, the uh, mayor's house is increased in value by uh, forty thousand dollars excuse me four hundred thousand um, dollars that you think how can one house increase by four hundred thousand dollars in value from one year to the next remember that's not the case they're saying that it increased in value uh, by four hundred thousand dollars from 2015 to 2018 that now we're talking about three years, you think, well, that's not so unreasonable. That's, there's a strong possibility because we were coming out of a recession, barely starting to come out of a recession in 2015, and where the real estate market is much healthier right now, almost to the levels that it was before the 2008 crash. So if we were already rock bottom, back towards the top, there's gonna be substantial increases. So uh, the $400,000 higher, $1,551,90, will give you a 10% uh, of that is the assessed value of 155,109. So if, if the mayor files an appeal on his property taxes, he's not appealing the assessed value, he's appealing the market value, right? The mayor may say, hey, um, Joe Barrios, Cook County, um, my house is not, you're assessing me at 1.55 million, but in reality, here's an appraisal showing my house is only worth 1.2 million or 1.3 million. Uh, that's a that's a winning argument, right? If he has an appraisal, that's a pretty strong argument to say, well, yeah, it's it's we can't charge him 1.55 if it's really worth 1.3. Alternatively, the mayor may think his house is worth 1.8 million, 1.9 million, because it's you know a nice house. Let's say he's given a lot of upgrades. But if he, the mayor or his tax appeal attorney do some research and they figure out, well, you know what? All the other houses that are um, single family homes, uh, scroll down here a little bit. Uh, with two baths, um, full and unfinished basement, full living area, with a square footage of um, approximately 10,300. All the other houses in this area that are close to that are only being reassessed, are only being assessed at $1.1 million. So it's not fair and just to charge me one point, to base me on $1.55 million. That is also a winning argument. So. There's a lot of information on this first property data page that you should familiarize yourself with um, and pay really close attention to. Um, I will tell you, don't get too wrapped up in uh, the fact whether they say you have a full uh, finished basement when your, your basement is full but not finished or partially finished or rec room. That really does not affect your, your market value by much. I mean, we're talking a few thousand dollars uh, at best. Square, if it's off a lot by square footage, um, that's usually something that you want to have fixed. Um, Again, if you say, you know, three bathrooms versus two bathrooms, not that big of a deal. Even if you have a mace from your house versus frame, there's something there, but usually not, not by much. Um, so if you scroll through the top here again, exemption history, excuse me, right there. You click on exemption history, and you'll see that the mayor received the homeowner's exemption last year um, and the year before. It says 2016, but remember, that's for 2017 taxes, right? Um, so the homeowner's exemption, the, the way to calculate that is last year, the, the state just gives a standard deduction or a standard discount, if you will, um, to all properties in the state of Illinois. And what they say is not that they're going to give you a dollar amount off, but that they're going to give you a fixed number off of assessed value. So uh, in the example that we were using earlier, if your assessed value is $100,000 um, and excuse me, if your market value is $100,000 and your assessed value is 10,000, last year the homeowner's exemption was worth 7,000. So they would say, um, instead of, uh, excuse me, yes, so 7,000. So what you do is you take your local tax rate, if your local tax rate is 7% in the city of Chicago and your assessed uh, homeowner's exemption was 7,000, then 7% 7 of that 7,000 would be your homeowner's discount, which last year it translated to about $500. This year, the state of Illinois has increased uh, the homeowner's exemption from a $7,000 off of assessed value discount to a $10,000 um, uh, discount. So that's gonna translate to about $700.
So, and then one other thing I'll point out in the municipalities where your tax rate is higher, in some cases much higher than 7%, I mean in some areas it's 23%, um, that means that your homeowner's discount will be $2,300, but you started with a much higher tax rate, so um, it kind of balances out a little bit. Um, question, can you please provide the link to the forms or steps to contest? Um, so we put that down in the comments uh, section for you, uh, the link to the assessor's office where you can, you can get. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through here where you can actually go to, to, to appeal. Um, so the, this will tell you the exemptions. Um, appeal history, if you've never appealed, this will actually show no appeal history. And that certificate of error just means that if at some point you should have received a discount or there was some, some type something that needed to be fixed, like you didn't get an exemption last year when you were supposed to, that's where the certificate of error will appear. So if you when you click on appeal history here, right, um, if your township is open for appeal, it will actually provide you with the option to submit an appeal. It asks you to certify that you're the owner or the person authorized to appeal the taxes, and it'll walk you through the steps of appealing. The mayor's township is not open for appeal right now. Now, when we say a township is open, 30 days. Every year, you get 30 days at the assessor, and then typically about four to six months later, you get 30 days at a higher level at the Board of Review. So how do you find out when your appeal time periods are gonna happen? As I said, the assessor's website is the most, informa most important place to start because you get all that information. So if we go up here to where it says appeals, it's, a, it's one of those floating drop-down menus. Um, and on there, the second link will be appeal and closing deadlines, right there. For those of you who can't see it on TV. So you'll click on appeal and closing deadlines, and that'll take you to a chart. So this is broken down by township, all the townships in Cook County. But if you scroll down here to the bottom, assessment filing dates, that's, these are the ones that are currently open. Um, if you're not on here, it means that you're not currently open. If you scroll down here to the bottom, there is a full chart that gives you uh, all the townships in Cook County. Now, the ones that are, I don't know if you can see the color on TV, but most of them in black. Some of them are in red and have an asterisk next to them. Uh, if you scroll down here to the bottom, it tells you the ones with the asterisk, single asterisk or reassessment districts, and those are the ones that are being reassessed this year. So we see Rogers Park, Lakeview, Hyde Park, Jefferson, Lake, West, North Chicago, and South Chicago. Those are the Chicago, the city of Chicago, um, the ones that encompass completely the city of Chicago um, in their townships. So uh, let's use, we were talking about the mayors, right? Lakeview. So I'm not sure if you can see here, uh, Lakeview, it's in red and asterisk. Um, let's go down a little bit. So assessment day notice is mailed. So that's the actual letter that comes from the assessor saying, hey, here's what we're gonna reassess your, your property values at. Um, it's got a chart that looks something, um, uh, that has got a picture of your house and it looks something like a little bit about the page we we're looking at a second ago. Um, but they'll mail that notice and it says, last date appeals accepted, June 7th, 2018. So for the mayor, if he wanted to appeal his property taxes, the assessments were they'll ma mailed May 7th, so the month period that he had was until June 7th, technically a little bit less because they were mailed and it takes a few days for him to receive the reassessment notices. Um, there's a re-review period, which usually comes a little bit after that. Um, and then if we, these are other information that isn't really relevant to what we're talking about here, but down here at the end, once the um, assessor starts moving along and filing appeals, at the top it says board of review filing dates. So the mayor's um, opened in May, so probably sometime in uh, November, I would guess, they're going to publish, well, a couple months ahead of time, I would say uh, August, September timeframe, they're gonna publish here with a November timeframe date, October, November timeframe date, saying when he can file an appeal at the Board of Review. So if you wanna find out when your time period is to open, this is where you would go. On the top left, where it says appeals, you, it's a drop down menu, and you go to appeal deadlines, uh, and then it brings you to this table showing you where you can, when your date is coming up. And again, we'll go back. To that property data page. And where it says exemption history. Here at the top. Excuse me. Uh, appeal history here at the top, which is the third link. You click on that. And 
when your appeal time period is open, it will allow you to actually submit the appeal online. Um, and that's one thing that I want to point out. The county makes it, the assessor's office makes it incredibly easy, easy to appeal your property taxes. They even let you do it online. Um, I, I will say, don't think that this is something you can knock out in 10 minutes. Give yourself um, a little bit of time, at least a couple hours, I would say, um, when you, you, you know, when you have a, a little bit of time to think because you want to, what it's going to do, it's going to auto-populate other houses in your area with assessed values um, for you to choose and to say which ones you want to, to be um, uh, considered with, which ones you want to be compared to uh, when it comes to your property taxes. Um, and you don't just want to choose the ones with the lowest value, right? You want to choose the ones that are most similar to your house with the lowest value or closest to your house with the lowest value. Because if you're, as we all know, in the city of Chicago and most of Cook County and probably in all um, urban areas, a difference of three or four blocks can make a really big difference when it comes to property value. So if you're using houses that are on your block or down the block or across the street as your comparables, that's the strongest evidence that um, you should be compared to them because of the ones that are closest to you. Especially if the county's using houses three or four blocks down where the property values are, are much, much different. Um, and you, if you do have an appraisal, if you've done a recent refinance or recently purchased the house, um, you'll have an appraisal or you'll also have proof of how much you paid for the house, right? If you bought a house for $100,000 last year and the county set, wants to reassess you or assess you at $150,000, submit the evidence. They'll, they'll require you to submit your closing documents from the time that you purchased the house, um, but you should submit them. And in those circumstances where you want to submit evidence, I, I would suggest that you actually go down to the assessor's office, not to your local township. I always advise people that the documents are typically sent down to the assessor's office and you know things can get lost in the, tr the transportation process um, and I also suggest not mailing them in because there's a little bit of discontrol with documents being lost um, actually go down to the assessor's office it's in um, the county building which is a lot of people know as City Hall that building actually belongs half to the county half to the city you go into that building you go on the side that has the Cook County Sheriff's that's the county side go up to the third floor and that's where the assessor's office is and that's where you can submit uh, actual evidence Never submit originals, always submit copies. Keep on, hold on to your originals. Um, so we have a question from someone named Rosa. I received a letter saying my property value actually decreased. Does that have anything to do with my taxes? This was prior to receiving a tax bill. Yes, it absolutely does have something to uh, do with your taxes, but it all depends on who sent you that letter, right? Um, if it's someone trying to sell you something or trying to get you to sell your house, I usually say, you know, don't trust those things too much. Um, you also, if you're in a reassessment year um, in the city of Chicago, you're, for example, everybody in the city of Chicago, you're going to start to get a lot of mailers from people offering you their services. Be very wary of um, who you chose to go to do a little bit of research, trying to figure out you want actual attorneys. Um, there are some companies out there that provide tax appeal services um, that honestly charge about the same rates as attorneys do, but they're not attorneys, and I don't know about you, but if I had a difference between just a company doing it versus lawyer, I'd, I'd always want a lawyer. Um, but to answer the second part of that question, yes. If your market value in your area has decreased from where it was last year or two years ago or three years ago, for whatever reason, um, you want to submit that evidence. You, uh, in, in a lot of circumstances, I have had, in some circumstances, I have had some clients who say, you know, um, X, Y, Z happened, the, the factory down the street closed, or they, they extended the expressway a couple years ago and it's right next to my house and it makes it really loud. That's significantly increased the, the assessed value or the market value. In those circumstances, I tell the client, look, pay a little bit of money, pay for an appraisal, about $300, pay for it. Um, you submit that as evidence of what your property is actually worth. If the county says, hey, your house is worth 300000 you say, well, that was until they built the expressway off-ramp with semis going by every 10 minutes. It's not worth a third of what it used to be. Um, here's an appraisal showing that. You significantly increased, or excuse me, decreased your uh, property tax bill by, by two-thirds um, just for $300. Um, and for you know, either the work of an appeal or paying uh, an attorney to do the appeal for you. So... The, the things that we learned about here, you go to the assessor site to find out what township you're in if you don't already know. You go to the assessor site, top left hand corner, uh, appeals drop down menu where it says appeal uh, deadlines. You click that link and it takes you to see when your township is going to be open for appeals. Um, so now another thing that we want to go to is there's another website called the Cook County Property Tax Portal. Um, and we're, we're getting close to wrapping up here, folks, so if you do have your questions, make sure to drop them in so that we can make sure to address them, and I'll try to, to get to all of them before we cut off. 
Uh, just a few more things to show you here. So first, the Cook County Property Tax Portal website is, is run by the city clerk. It has um, uh, a lot of information. Um, so, oh, and I see there's a, a back question from Rosa. Said the letter came from the assessor's office. So that, Rosa, is probably your reassessment notice. That's where the county is telling you what market value they're placing on your property. Um, because you, if, I'm assuming that you're in the city of Chicago based on the fact that you're one of the uh, townships that's being reassessed in the city of Chicago this year. That's why you got that notice. Remember, when you get that notice, that means that your appeal time period is open and you have 27, 28 days left because it's 30 days from after they mail, it, mail that notice. Even though they told you they're reducing your assessed value, it does not mean you should sit on your you know, elbows on your laurels and, and not appeal. That, that means that they found some evidence to decrease your uh, market value or your assessed value, leading to your assessed value, leading to lower property taxes. But chances are that they may not have given you the full decrease that you merited based on the evidence that's available. So I, I would advise you to, to appeal anyway, even if you're in the circumstances where you're staying the same or lower, that doesn't mean that there isn't evidence out there that you should be lower. Because even if there's one or two houses in your township that are similar to yours, that chances are that you have um, an opportunity to, to reduce your value. Now, I will say we've had clients in the past who we've appealed over a couple of years. Um, and I've, after we do our research, we discover that they're the lowest assessed value in that property. Now, in that circumstance, I tell the client, you're already fairly assessed because you're paying lower than anybody else with the same type of house in your area. And that's good. Now, if you appeal year after year, if you have an attorney appealing year after year, um, and you're already at the low end, well, that's good news, right? Um, but you, that means that you should also be keeping on your, an eye on your tax bill because if you're at the low end, when in a reassessment year, the county only has one place to take you, and that's up, and you wanna fight them tooth and nail to try, uh, to try and keep that tax bill as low as possible. So, the Cook County Tax Portal website, I just wanna point it out to you because it has a lot of really useful information. So we'll again use Mayor Emanuel's house as an example. And again, um, full disclosure, I am not releasing his address. That was a secret, it is public information. If you type it into Google, it'll come up. So we're gonna go and type in his pin here. And then we click on the search button. And again, it takes you to kind of a summary of information on the property. Uh, the address, the mailing address, uh, Ron Emanuel, Amy Rue, uh, it's a mayor and is, uh, and is the First Lady of Chicago. Um, over here is the important information that we want to get, right, on the right corner. And I, again, I apologize if this is inverted, I'm not really sure how to fix, let me slide that over a little bit. I'm not really sure how to fix that on Facebook Live. So estimated property value, so this is the actual calculation, right? Estimated property value um, leads to the assessed value, 10%, and this is 2017 still, right? Um, this, should, this will be updated to um, tax year 2018 once the, the, the values are assigned. So we already know that the mayor's last house last year was 1.1 million, but that we're in a reassessment process right now. So once that reassessment is finalized at 1.55 million, if the mayor doesn't appeal, and mayor, if you're listening and you need a good tax appeal attorney, feel free to give me a call. Um, I'll make sure to help you out to try and keep that huge increase of $400,000 down as much as possible. So the 10% the of the assessed value for last year was 114.568. Um, and then the, again, the lot size here, it gives us the tax rate for the city of Chicago. And the, if, if you'll notice here where it says assessed value history, property class description, and tax rate history there in blue, those are links that you can actually click on. So if we click on assessed value history, it actually gives us the last five years of assessed values. So if we look, 2013, the mayor's house was assessed at 94668 which is 10% of market value. So the mayor's house in 2013, the county was saying that it was worth $946,000 and some change. Um, then we jumped, it stayed the same for 2014. And then, whoa, what do we have here? In 2015, it jumped from 94668 to 114568 That means that uh, the county, not from one year to the next, remember, because if this would have gone back one more year in 2012, we would have seen that that would have still been 94,668 because the last, that was the last reassessment year. So in 2015, from 2012 to 2015, the county says there was a little bit of an increase from $946,000 in market value to $1.14 in market value. 
But now that's three years, 15, 16, and 17, and we're in 2018 now, which we've talked about. The county's saying, well, now maybe your house is worth a lot more than it was. Now it's worth $1.55 million, which is a $400,000 increase from 2012, which means that a tax bill is gonna see a pretty substantial increase. I mean, that's um, uh, over one third. So his tax bill is gonna go up over one third of what it was this year, next year. So uh, watch out, Mary Emanuel, in July, you're gonna be hit with a pretty heavy tax bill. So if we click out of that, and we look at tax rate history, again, we scroll down, it gives us a summary of the tax rate history. In 2013, in Chicago, it was 6.832. Um, last year, in 2016, it's 7.145. This year, it's 7.266. It does vary. Not the entire city of Chicago will have the same tax rate because you're, it's not only determined by the city and the county, but your local taxing districts, uh, you know, schools, libraries, um, your township will determine its own property taxes. So some of them may be a little bit higher, some of them may be a little bit lower, but all generally in that same range. So other parts of here, oh, let me show you one more thing here on top. If you click the blue link up here that says tax calculator, it actually gives you the calculation that we've been talking about to determine the tax bill, the most recent tax bill that just came out. Assessed value, market value would have been up here, 1.14 million. Assessed value of 114,568 times the state equalizer of 2.9627. Gives you the equalized assessed value for the mayor's house of 339,431. Local tax rate of 7.266. Mayor's total tax bill, 24,663.06. We deduct the homeowner's exemption. As we talked about, the homeowner's exemption will be even across the uh, state of Illinois, 10,000 of assessed value. So the mayor's 10,000, 7.266% of that is 726,060 cents. So he gets a homeowner's exemption discount um, for a total of 23,936.46, which is his total tax bill minus the homeowner's exemption. Now, uh, homeowner's exemption, what do you need to qualify for that? You need to be the person legally responsible for paying the property taxes and reside in the house uh, as your primary residence as of January 1st of the tax year in question. So in order to get the homeowner's exemption discount this on this tax bill that just came out, you would have had to have lived in the property on January 1st, 2017, um, and have been legally responsible for paying the property taxes. Now, that does not mean that you have to be the owner, right? If you are a tenant, there are tenants sometimes where in the lease it says, you tenant are responsible for paying the property taxes. That lease is a legal document, meaning that that legal document makes you legally responsible for paying the property taxes. And if you live there, you, as the tenant, can get the homeowner's exemption. Um, the big thing to remember is you're only entitled to receive it on one property in the state of Illinois, and it has to be your primary residence. If you only vacation in the city of Chicago and you live somewhere else, you don't qualify for the homeowner's exemption. But if you are a homeowner and you only have one home and you live there in Cook County, you should be getting that discount. Um, if not, you should go apply for it. Again, assessor's office, um, same building as City Hall, third floor on the county side. So, um, the last quick website I'll take you to is the Cook County Treasurer's Office, which when you go to looks like this. Um, if you click on the big purple button that says your property tax overview, um, it again will ask you for the PIN. So we'll go ahead and put in the PIN. And then here, the CAPTCHA is not actually something you have to type in. You just click the button that says I'm not a robot. Um, I'm not really sure how those works, but how those work, but we'll click on it. We'll click continue. And again, it just takes you to a summary. Um, are your taxes paid? It'll give you a summary of the bill amounts. Um, if you don't have access to your paper bill, this is a good place to go and check that information. You can actually download a copy of your tax bill. If you see down here on the, towards the bottom, it'll say download a copy of your tax bill. Um, it'll tell you how much is currently owed and there's a pay now button that actually allows you to pay um, There is a charge if you uh, pay by by check um, You can do auto draft where they take it out of your I'm not sure if it's called auto draft, but where they take the money directly out of your bank account um, They there is an option where you can pay by credit card um, But the the county doesn't actually administer that it's a third-party company that charges a, a percentage which is pretty hefty so I would caution you um, to only pay by credit card in extreme circumstances if you're gonna pay um, a good charge on top of it. So um, to summarize, a good place to always start 
is at the assessor's website with property data where you can learn a lot of information. Um, the Cook County Tax Board also has a lot of good information. Make sure to take some time and study your tax bill. Um, if you have any questions, folks, go ahead and drop them in while we're wrapping up. I'll try to, to get your response. Um, you are only, you can appeal, there's a 30 day time period every year where you can appeal your property taxes. Even though the county reassesses property taxes every three years, you can appeal every year. If you are in the city of Chicago, you should absolutely 110% appeal your property taxes this year because you're in a reassessment year. And a dangerous reassessment year because the market value increased. Have, excuse me, the, I think we, we had a little bit of a technical error there. Um, if you're in the city of Chicago, you should appeal 110% appeal your property taxes this year because we are in a reassessment year, which means that the county's coming around and redoing the property values, which they have not done in three years. And we know that from 2015 to 2018, the market value of properties have increased substantially. So it is a very crucial year because this time next year, your property, you may find that your property taxes have increased 20, 30, 50, 100%. I have had clients call that their tax bills have increased more than 100% from last year um, in um, townships that were reassessed last year for property taxes, taxes this year. Remember, do not wait until July to find out that your assessed value was increased, your market value of your property was increased by the county by 100%, because at that point, you will be stuck with that bill and you will only be able to appeal the next year's bill. So now, if you're in the city of Chicago, now is the time to appeal. Um, so that'll do it for today, folks. The most important thing is to make sure um, knowledge is power, review your tax bills, review them in detail. There's a lot of information available for free at your fingertips. Appealing is free. Um, if you do decide to hire an attorney for appeal property taxes, you can always keep us in mind. Robson and Lopez LLC. We do have a Facebook page. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash R-O-B-S-O-N-A-N-D-L-O-P-E-Z-L-L-C. That's facebook.com forward slash uh, Robson and with the and spelled out, Lopez LLC. Um, or you can visit us on our web, web page, www.robsonlopez.com. www.robsonlopez.com. Um, or if you ever want to reach us, you can feel free to give us a call at 312-523-2166. Again, 312-523-2166. Um, if you choose to hire an attorney, we would love to have you as our clients. We charge on a contingency basis, which means we don't charge you anything up front. Um, we only charge you a percentage of your savings, which if you can pay the county less and just pay me a little bit of that less, it always works out. Um, thank you very much. And if you do have questions, drop them in the comment sections and we will try to, to get you a, a response in writing um, in the comment sections, obviously. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day.